sir. Welcome again, sir. Yeah, we are live now, sir. Yeah. Vipin, so we start. Dr. Vipin. Yes, sir. Uh, please publish the uh, YouTube link in the group. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Vipin, can we start? Yes, sir. We can start now. Okay. Is it on? No. Professor Anand, are you with us? Can you hear me, sir? Yeah. I can see you, sir. Yes, I can hear you. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. So we begin our program today. I, I welcome on behalf of Ramanujan College and the Teaching Learning Center of Ramanujan College, I welcome all of you to this panel discussion, which is going to be on academic leadership. This is a part of the ongoing induction orientation program for participants across the country. We have almost 6,000 teachers uh, who are participating in this uh, orientation program. And it is indeed my great privilege and an honor to introduce to you three very distinguished academics who are also leaders in the world of academics. I have with me uh, Professor Andreas Altman, who is the Managing Director of the Management Center in Innsbruck, Austria. I have with me eminent academic from University of Delhi, Professor Anand Prakash. He is the head of the Department of the Department of Psychology in the University of Delhi. He's been the former dean of the uh, international relations uh, in our university. And I also have principal of Ramanujan College, Professor S.P. Agarwal, who has been uh, leading this uh, college for the last 11 years. And uh, uh, we are here to, get to, to act discuss this very important issue of academic leadership. So uh, without uh, uh, taking any more time, let me briefly introduce uh, Professor Anand. It's very difficult to introduce Professor Anand because he is uh, such a luminary, such an eminent academic uh, with, with a huge amount of expertise and experience behind him. Uh, he, his, his area of uh, academic expertise is in social psychology organizational behavior, psychology of human resources. Uh, he also works on the psychology at, of, the, of the margins and of course, qualitative and quantitative uh, research. Uh, of the many, many PhDs that he has, uh, that he has uh, uh, supervised, uh, some of the interesting topics that he has worked on is leadership in education, uh, well-being, the concept of well-being and success, meaning of work, value orientation. So uh, uh, this is his uh, expertise. And uh, we've, uh, in, in Ramanujan College, we've had the opportunity and the, uh, uh, the, the good, 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 good fortune of having Professor Anand come and speak to us on many occasions. And he has left an indelible mark on us. And we've been very inspired listening to him. Uh, and his uh, and uh, and the uh, and the ideas that he has, Professor Anand uh, uh, has has been an eminent academic, no doubt, but he's also been a kind of a support, a pillar of strength for the University of Delhi, for the number of important positions that he has held. He's been 
uh, he has been in the in the reorganization of the syllabuses of Delhi University, not only in his own department but across the university. He has uh, been a major part of research policies in our in our university. He is uh, also a, a important member in other universities like uh, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University and other universities in an, uh, in our country. So uh, with this major and huge expertise and experience that uh, Professor Anand has, I'd, I request him to begin today's discussion with his um, uh, presentation on what he thinks is uh, uh, leadership and academics. Professor Anand. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Dr. Malia, and thank you, uh, Ramanujan College, who uh, often take the risk of inviting me into a variety of programs. Uh, and I always feel privileged and humbled by their great gesture and uh, uh, affection so profusely showered uh, on me. And uh, the agenda before us is to uh, look into the issue of the academic leadership. And when I'm going to share some of my initial thoughts and maybe as the discussion build on further, we may take it up uh, to a relatively advanced level. But to begin with, uh, uh, the academic leadership that we are referring to, I assume that we are referring it to for the higher education. Uh, and uh, so I would be specifically uh, addressing the context of higher education and the challenges before the academic leadership to revitalize and reinvigorate the higher education. And my point of reference and understanding would be uh, the Indian organizations in particular, and some of the uh, points and ideas that uh, I am likely to share may also have implications for the higher education in general at a global context. So uh, the education, uh, the academic leadership uh, in this uh, uh, context is of utmost importance and particularly uh, in the uh, present times when there is a very different kind of uh, idea of knowledge is uh, moving ahead. There's a very different kind of expectation of the higher education, uh, the expectation of the society and the expectation of stakeholders are changing uh, at a very, very uh, different level. Uh, so this is another. The third is the, uh, the stakeholders, including government, society, students, and parents. They are now having a very different kind of expectation and also the faculty. So keeping that expectations of the various stakeholders uh, and the global context in which we have to position higher education, I see the challenges before the academic leadership uh, in this uh, our own country is related to having an ever encompassing vision for edu higher education and which has been by and large being shaped by the uh, stakeholder and particularly by the government. So we will have to see that uh, the leadership uh, of the higher education has to visualize what kind of relationship that leadership visualize with the funding, the resource generation, because I feel for the higher education to flourish unquestionably and into the right direction, there has to be a commitment for the resources from the stakeholder and particularly by the government. Uh, so what kind of relationship that the leadership visualize? Are this leadership going to visualize as the government, as a regulator, as a controller, as a guide, as a policy maker, or they only act as a resource provider, as a funder with certain kind of vision and certain kind of a target that the higher education has to meet in terms of fulfilling the expectation of the society. So this is the first very important within that context, what kind of a vision of leadership, institutional vision that the leadership brings by involving all the stakeholders in creating a passionate uh, emotion around that kind of vision that's very important. And the twin objective with the higher education is being visualized. Now the third objective has also been added. The twin objective is that how this academic leadership engages in creation of a knowledge and dissemination of a knowledge. And beside the creation and dissemination, how it can shape the various practices 
into the marketplace. And marketplace, I am not using in this constricted sense of the term of employability. Marketplace, market as a metaphor in which the society and the various other stakeholders becomes the receiver of the knowledge that is coming from the university. So this three-point objective, the third one is added, uh, I think, in the last decade. But the first one that how do we engage, how do we make the various stakeholders teaching the, the uh, faculty members, the students and other in knowledge creation, what kind of a knowledge you are willing to create and what is the true definition of a knowledge that will provide direction to the society. And third, by what kind of pedagogical devices, by what kind of mechanism you are disseminating that knowledge by publishing, by communicating orally or by engaging in virtual and different other kinds of a mode and how far this knowledge is able to establish a healthy interface with the society. So this three uh, point objective or the three pronged uh, strategy has to be an integral part of the leadership visioning. Now, this is, this is a very important uh, to do that. The second very important part of the academic leadership has to be dealing with various kinds of regulatory mechanism by which the building the world-class universities, the universities which are competitive, universities which are rooted into the, the local traditions as well as aspiring to respond globally to, to the world order challenge. You know, that kind of perspective uh, is very important as a second point that this, this academic leadership has to be done. When we uh, normally do research, uh, and particularly I'm a researcher into the organizational context, we often say that the two qualities are very important in a leader. One, the leader has to be good in the kind of a job he's doing. So the technical competence, whatever work that leader is doing is very important. And second, that we also find very relevant into Indian context is the relational competence. Like the third point comes from this, that how to bring a team, how to bring together people with the diverse views, subscribing to different kinds of ideological positions, having a very diverse perspective into that and how they can be put into the work in a very complementary manner, held together by a superordinate vision. So that's the challenge. And I think uh, most of the leadership in our own country often get huge challenges and difficulties in managing a diverse team, diverse workforce, because the different interests of the stakeholders take them, draw, you know, pull them into different directions and bringing them together, making them stay and focus is the very important challenge of, of the uh, important. The fourth very important point for academic leadership, uh, particularly in, in the Indian context, is that how do we deal with the regulatory mechanism without compromising with the vision and the mission of the higher education? So continuously negotiating with the regulatory mechanism, which often impinges upon the notion of autonomy, freedom, and other kind of things, and the excellent leadership, the academic leadership has to negotiate between the regulatory demands of the regulatory mechanisms and the demands of generating the true knowledge and disseminating the true knowledge and creating a healthy interface with the society. So I expect a good leadership to help them deal with this kind of a thing. And finally, I can go on giving the list of it, but finally, and that's where I would uh, like to you know, give a point and then start with this. Third, the university as an institution must also have its accountability parameters in a place. So if I am disseminating knowledge, I am using the resources of the of the uh, you know society, or I don't want to use the word taxpayer because that has acquired another kind of political overtones. But how university or higher education as an institution can become abilities can be established in a transparent manner into the system, and if the leadership is able to wave, leadership is able to walk the talk and create a kind of accountable mechanism by the society. Anybody can understand that why a particular kind of a thing is done rather than leaving it to the multitude of interpretations by various stakeholders. So I think to begin with, these are the four five points to begin with in an academic leadership, I expect to, to visualize by having a very clear vision and mission, bringing different stakeholders together, making a commitment for certain amount of, you know, the resource and the other things, bringing the diverse team into the perspective and creating 
a mechanism of self accountability in a very transparent way if that can be done no i know that i am idealizing but our job also has to idealize because you always feel that in absence of an ideal perspective practice perspective had a very limited view so we must first establish what kind of ideal we wish to achieve and then maybe we can think of developing pathways developing a map developing a kind of a routes by which we can reach those destinations nirmalya i think uh, that's the opening remarks i would like to give about the academic leadership and i return it back to you thank you thank you so much uh, professor anil that is that sets the ball rolling for uh, uh, i think a very interesting uh, discussion you you mapped out the macro issues of what the leadership has to do in an institutional situation where the institution as well as the larger world including the regulatory regulatory mechanisms that operate on the on the institution how the the leadership has to negotiate all that so uh, uh we we begin with this large uh, macro level understanding of uh, leadership and the institution uh, i would now uh, uh, request professor andreas oldman uh, who is the managing director the founding managing director of the management uh, center at insberg uh, and uh, uh, he's with us uh, thank you very much sir for for being with us and we welcome you and uh, his he uh, uh, is a uh, uh, academic whose uh, uh, expertise lies in in business administration business administration and economics uh, he has a, a, a research work on public finance from the university of innsbruck uh, and uh, he is of course uh, uh, associated with many uh, supervisory boards and associations including the european accreditation council of aacsb uh, uh, then then he is the in the advisory board international advisory board of the antwerp management school uh, he has also been awarded with the knights cross for science and arts by the republic of austria uh, a very eminent academic and a uh, 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 inspirational leader of his own uh, uh, institute i must also uh, say at this point that ramanujan college has a memorandum of understanding with the management center in zbug uh, of for an exchange program uh, with the students and Uh, uh teachers of both the institutions and also uh we like collaborative work on on development uh, on designing and development of curriculum as well as of uh, of sharing research and other knowledge uh, uh, knowledge based uh, uh you know uh, uh work that that both these institutions can do together so uh professor uh, osman um uh, i request you to uh make your observations about today's uh, uh uh discussion on leadership and academics professor altman uh, dear ladies and gentlemen uh, uh here uh at our partner university at ramanujan college in uh, new delhi i'm more than pleased and and honored to be part of this panel and i've uh, feel also humbled to be now sitting on this uh, panel and try to contribute now what have i been uh, perhaps uh, to better understand my role uh before i go into the field of leadership now what is it what is what my role is and then i try to explain um how i try to interpret and understand this role now i uh the um, the the MCI the management center in Innsbruck is a spin off or a spin out of the public university of Innsbruck the public university of Innsbruck is was founded in 1669 is a comprehensive research university including medicine and all these uh, fields uh, law and and uh, theology and and all that and business ec- administration economy uh, economics humanities name it now This is a public university with Nobel Prize winners, with uh, lots of prestige and so on. And um, I I received my PhD there, 
and uh, worked in the field of public finance. And then I, I was part of a task for software team in my late twenties or early and early thirties, a task force of two or three years that we said, now we need to innovate the university. The university was very conservative. The university was uh, not really business related. The, the, the university was a very, very a traditional, very, very good distinguished university. But we thought a uh, couple of people around me that uh, it would, it, it lacks of innovation. Then we said, let's uh, try to reform the university from, in, from within and bring in innovation. And then we said, okay, then we soon realized that we would fail because legislatory framework, regulation, but also culture of, of the people wasn't there, wasn't ready for innovation. Then we said, okay, then let's create something new under the umbrella of the university. And we were able to bring together the university, the, the boards and, and the rectors and, 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 and also the Chamber of Commerce and the Association of Industries and the city of Innsbruck and the region uh, and, and so on to form a consortium to give birth to this new institution and all these, and this consortium, which consortium is still the owner of DMCI, including the public university. Now, to then better understand how I try to interpret and live leadership. Um, the metaphor which was used, the, what is the picture if you create, if you are in your early 30s, I was uh, 31 to become the head of an, of an academic institution like the MCI. So I hope you all out there are impressed. But uh, to be frank, it doesn't, uh, not even my children are impressed by that because becoming the head of nothing. And uh, then we, we started and we, th we, we thought, okay, if we did the, the same as the traditional, as our alma mater is the university, it wouldn't make sense. Let's become the speedboat of the university. So there's a flagship in the speedboat and try to sail in the same fleet, but focus on different functions. And our function is innovation. Our function is business relations. Our, uh, our principle is our understanding is international outreach and so on. Okay, and now I, uh, the, this little MCI has uh, more than 3,000 students. We have uh, 300 partner universities. Uh, they come all, uh, students come from all over the world, applicants, faculty, students, we send them abroad and so on. And we actually have been uh, receiving better rankings and better uh, feedback um, from our students and from the business world and from all the others out there. Also ranking and accreditation institutions as our alma mater which somehow may even create some kind of sensitivity or tensions. And what is the, what is the principle, uh, principle uh, behind leadership as I try to understand it? First of all, leadership means being humble. Being humble. The second understanding of leadership, which I have, I, I don't think this is a principle in any, uh, I mean, relevant for any institution, but in our context, I think it is. Being humble and try to serve all the others. You are, and may uh, like it or use the term or not, but I see myself as somehow as the servant of, the, of all the others, to encourage them, to give them opportunities, to perhaps, uh, guide them to uh, create, uh, to open their eyes, to create visions, and then support them to run, support them in their mission. But at, at least at the beginning, my mission was to, to you know, to, to, uh, to explain my vision and the picture I want to create together with them, to bring them into my boat now. I even ask them, now the vision and the picture should not be coming from myself, 
you, my department heads, our, our faculty, our team, you should be the ones bringing up innovation, creating new pictures. And what does it take? What do you need from me? Very often it's just some, sometimes or quite a while, obviously resources are, in, are in, involved. But that's typically not, of, not always the point. Very often it only needs that I think that complies with our long-term strategy. That I think, yes, I, I, uh, uh, this is what, what uh, creates my, what, uh, what uh, deserves my or the general support. And how can, and my, my, my question is, how could I try to open doors for you to support you? Okay. And through that, I think we have been creating a very nice culture and we call it the entrepreneurial school because we have a very entrepreneurial culture. And every day I come into my office, I, I'm happy to see smiling faces, people saying, and also students saying, hopefully saying, now Andres, when I woke up in the morning, I was looking forward to go to the MCI because this is the place where ideas and the future can be created. So, this is my concept of, of, of leadership and especially academic leadership. I'm sure if you are in, in, a, in a situation where whatever, if you are in a military service, if you are in the, fi uh, in the, in the fire uh, fighting uh, unit, obviously it demands a, dif uh, a different type of leadership because their hierarchy, their strict order, their whatever may be relevant, but in our context, and this is why I tried to explain the context, leadership, I think, uh, works quite well like I've been trying to describe it. And uh, then I would like to give the word back uh, um, after my initial statement. Thank you, Professor Altman. Uh, uh, that's an interesting way of uh, looking at what a leader does in an institution and uh, what are his uh, ways of looking at his students and how uh, he has to be an inspiring leader so that a uh, future can be created in, in the institution. Uh, uh, I would uh, now bring in uh, my principal, uh, Professor S.P. Agarwal, to speak on leadership. But before he does that, uh, it, it is also my privilege to uh, say a few words about him. Uh, since uh, 2009, he has been an inspiring leader to Ramanujan College and has uh, uh, been the bold person who has been able to uh, bring the college to uh, a great status in, 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 in Indian academics. Uh, his, his expertise lies in international management and international finance management. He has been an associate research associate at the University of Texas and he has done his MBA from the University of Houston. Uh, as principal of Ramanujan College, uh, uh, which is an A-grade NAC uh, National uh, Accreditation and Assessment Council A-grade college, he has been an uh, important member of the peer teams which the NAC, which is called the NAC peer teams, and he has uh, gone all over the country assessing uh, colleges and giving them grades. So he has a huge experience of looking at different colleges across the country and how they function. Uh, he has also been awarded much to the pride of our college uh, as one of the 50 most influential principles in education of India by the World uh, Federation of Academic Cooperation World Education Congress in July uh, to, uh, 2019. So, uh, uh, Professor Agarwal, uh, we'd like you to uh, give us a first-hand uh, idea about what you think uh, leadership and in academics is all about. Professor Agarwal. Thank you, Samantha, for introducing and saying so good words about me. My co-panelist, Professor Andreas, our own Professor Anand Prakash, Dr. Lata, my colleagues, 
and all the participants who are joining us from all over the country. First of all, welcome. And uh, uh, you know, on behalf of Ramanujan College, and as my panelist, you know, started a lively discussion, Professor Anand Prakash gave a very good view, macro view of leaders in the universities. Uh, Professor Andreas specifically gave you his first-hand experience, how he brought up MCI and University of Innsbruck. And though I'm not an expert in that area, but being a leader of this institution for the last 12 years, I will also uh, share with you my, uh, you know, whatever experience I have gained over the period with all of you. Friends, the story is similar to what Professor Andreas uh, explained about Innsbruck. Uh, you know, my institution was also a very small, you know, known as Deshbandhu Evening earlier and uh, very conservative, hardly any work, you know, except teaching and giving degrees. And when I joined uh, it in 2008, then we thought of something new and uh, we, we created a new institution in 2012. And from there, the journey started. So briefly, what I feel about uh, the administration, I would put before you. Friends, basically academic administrator or college governance is a uh, you know, little different maybe from university or a larger institution, but uh, you know, more or less the same things. Well, in academic, especially in public funded institutions like in Delhi University or maybe in some state universities, uh, Delhi University structure is little different, uh, much more open, uh, independent, a lot of uh, voice of the stakeholders is there. It may not be in, in other institutions, but since my experience is basically in, in a uh, Delhi University uh, setup, so I would be sharing with you uh, more of that. Friends, I, I would like to go a little back, you know, how leaders are being, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, leaders learn or how leaders are being created. See, it all depends upon your background also. Very, very important. See, I have been educated in a very small village. Then I went to a higher school in, 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 in a small city, like uh, which, which is now a, a, a very big city, Guru Gram. Uh, then I went to Delhi University. And from there onwards, I went to United States in two universities. And, you know, when, when you go abroad and study there, and then uh, during, during uh, you know, summer, like uh, Professor Andrea said, we used to be trained in, in private sector companies, maybe in the form of training. And then once you come back and join a uh, uh, institution, then, I, see the realization comes that whatever experience you get from all this is really very very important so first thing i would like to say to all academics that they should uh, go beyond their institution and discuss learn or attain something new for learning everyday new things about leadership or about anything because leadership is one but there are so many things you know under leadership now, under academic leadership, basically, as uh, my two panelists said, that uh, the main role is, uh, you know, teaching, learning, research and innovation, then also, uh, you know, administration, part of administration, managing the faculty and uh, the, the staff, non-teaching staff, and then, uh, you know, the, the uh, raising of resources, finance, and then uh, distribution salaries and benefits also, that is part, accounting, because uh, you have to uh, get done the financial statements and then audit also. That is also part of responsibility of any of the head of institution, whether he's a vice chancellor or, or a principal. So these are basically, uh, you know, three, four things which a academic head. But there is, as Professor Andrea said, there is a huge difference between an administrative head, like in services or in police services or in military, where there is a hierarchy, there is an order, and you order it and things are done. Here, it is completely very, very participative. Fa faculty is very empowered, highly empowered, and they should be empowered. And you are only there, uh, you know, as first among equals, 
and to manage day to day affairs now how to manage and how to get the work done how to get the new ideas how to uh, you know get the innovation done that is the job of the leader so what we did in this uh, you know institution briefly i would share with you uh, see basically a leader uh, you know especially uh, his mindset should be very very open what i said i will explain further but mindset should be very very open he should have a vision clear vision a, a plan in in mind that uh, this is my 5 year plan this is my 10 year plan this is my 25 year plan if he is able to execute otherwise it does not matter then he should you know dream right i mean he should not dream big that okay i will uh, you know uh, change everything within a minute or within a year no it is not possible like let me give you an example when i started from deshbandhu evening college so everything was in disarray everything was uh, not there in place now when you start from such a place how to start so what i thought first uh, you know uh, we discussed with the stakeholders what needs to be done to re to revamp this issue so i gave certain ideas faculty gave certain ideas and then i thought let us start working rather than uh, you know uh, too much involved in day to day thing let us start working give them the conducive atmosphere to work that is uh, you know clean uh, uh, spaces clean the toilets uh, proper classrooms everything proper so that they feel motivated to work so we started with that in, in very first year uh, you know we did this uh, 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 very least uh, uh, you know interaction with the with the people but then they started speaking about that yes institution is doing leadership is doing something and then involving them in day to day affairs that is also very very important and then when when you uh, when we talk of teaching learning and research of course you have to supervise also let us say you take uh, uh, you know your institution opens at x time you come one hour before that and then you take a round of the institution take a round i'm not talking about uh, you know just to uh, to uh, see that whether teacher has gone to the class or not that is not important take a round talk to the stakeholder talk to the students talk to everybody who who is uh, there in the institution that makes them feel good and comfortable and also uh, you know they feel accountable that okay the the uh, the leader can can visit any time so that 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 gives a different kind of feeling so institution in itself start coming up now another important thing uh, you know with which uh, i gave an example to you similarly the situation is very very simple once you make a plan once you have a vision once you give new ideas now one thing is that you give a new idea and there is no takers for that so as professor andreas said that he need we as a leader you need to encourage the ideas of your faculty ideas of your staff ideas of other people so just talk to them just talk to them and get ideas and out of those ideas if it matches with the institutional uh, you know framework if it matches with the uh, you know with the objective long term strategy long term plan then you must start pursuing it and sometimes you know we have seen that suppose there is a idea coming from a faculty let us i say okay you go ahead you pursue the idea suppose there is a funding requirement all right fine funding is also done that idea might fail it doesn't matter but 99% of the time the idea will be good and it will come up further so that people are encouraged that uh, you know the, the leadership tr uh, have a trust in them you know uh, another important thing happens is during uh, these these things that suppose one faculty starts this two start this three starts this then everybody start thinking that i have nothing to do and then they come up uh, to the leadership that okay sir we also want to do work in that area you know my my simple answer is you should have your own idea let us not work in those areas where somebody already is working let them be independent you do your own uh, idea you come up with the idea we will fund it we will uh, promote it we will do everything in that direction so that is how you keep on innovating and getting ideas and putting the people to work so that is what you know uh, uh, we have done in this institution then empowering them see 
we have to share like uh, uh, both of, both the gentlemen said we have to share the powers we have to share the uh, you know uh, empower them to do certain things only thing is you keep a watch on the situation but empower them to do to take certain decisions unless until you do that you cannot run democratic institutions you cannot run democratic educational institutions so that is very very important so you your mind should be open that don't keep everything into your pocket just share with the people just talk to them and just empower them to do the work otherwise if you do not trust them things cannot be worked out then uh, another important thing which we have observed in this institution that uh, you know we need to focus on the training of the staff whether it is a teaching staff non teaching staff training also helps initially people will register i agree there is no uh, a problem in that uh, most of them will feel that we are already trained for the last 25 years 30 years 40 years how how do we need training yes there 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 is a resistance but you keep on starting at least few will come with you so then you know what happens is that uh, with the help of this teaching learning center and other things what we did is we started training our own faculty and the training definitely changes the mindset to do something extraordinary and that has helped us to bring innovation and research culture into the institution uh, you know the faculty started publishing in good journals then uh, they started uh, talking about the patents they started talking doing something new uh, you know which i can share with you there are several things which uh, you know during the course of this meeting we will continue with those then another important aspect which i feel as a leader see uh, in in academic leadership conflicts are bound to occur uh, uh, professor uh, anand prakash is a uh, psychologist he 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 can explain bet, uh, better but this conflict management is the key to leadership now what happens is that let us say conflict arises one way is that you uh, uh, train your guns and the other person is also having the gun and uh, you forget and you start what happens is that uh, you, you you don't start talking to each other and then you know things are uh, apart so let's not do that conflict management is very simple in the sense that you must be communicative you must put forth your point you may not agree but let us remain on talkative terms and managing those conflicts in a professional manner is extremely important because you need to be stress free you need to uh, you know just don't think about it because you need to respect the idea of the other person also very very important because he may have a point then think uh, twice thrice and then professionally deal with these conflicts uh, 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 sometimes you know the the leader is also bound to fail there are several decisions ideas in which you fail yes uh, you can uh, be a failure but learn from them and learn from your experience and then uh, come up with a better uh, solution in the future see in this institution again let me tell you that as professor andrea said that we have done everything in this institution and in spite of being a delhi university institution we have implemented several of such things which are difficult to do in different colleges uh, you know uh, even in larger colleges or best rated colleges number 1 number 2 we may not be the best rated but uh, you know uh, we are not worried about that because it takes a while we are a new institution to to come to that level now another important uh, aspect some certain things the the qualities uh, professor andreas has already uh, uh, talked to you uh, regarding kindness compassion forgiveness patience personal integrity and conflict management i have talked to you now uh, see another important uh, route which we have to take uh, as a uh, as a as an academic administrator see academic administrator is basically a facilitator to run the institution uh you know another important point i would like to make like uh, you know our own uh, dr radhakrishnan said that education is a mission similarly i would say that academic academic leadership is a mission it is not a, a job in a, in itself it's a mission you have to uh, you know target that and achieve with the mission that is very very important 
and uh, you know the the uh, as i said the old ways of controlling the people old ways of dealing with the people doesn't work in academic leadership in the new system and you need to uh, you know go to the new uh, uh, leadership styles which probably uh, the experts will can speak to you and you need to be a transformational leader that means you think out of the box and then uh, you know uh, implement but again these things may be applicable to x institution y institution but may not be applicable everywhere it all depends upon situation to situation so there is nothing no specific rule of leadership which is applicable in a particular institution then uh, see communication skills of the leader should be of the top uh, uh, category you know one one should be very very clear about the uh, the concept and the uh, how you communicate with the people because sometimes people uh, you know uh, becomes rough tough you you need to keep a lot of patience because you need to listen uh, talk out the things and wait for the right moment to 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 uh, do the further talking because uh, unless until you you have a patience it is not possible for you to uh, get the things done uh, well again another important uh, thing which uh, i feel is very very important that a leader must work in a team team man he should be a perfect team man and encourage each one to be the team person but uh, i have noticed that few people cannot work in team but doesn't mean they are inefficient they have lot of potential and give them the work and they will execute it so uh, as a leader you need to understand that who uh, the the quality of the faculty the uh, attitude the mind of the person the mindset of the person what kind it is accordingly you assign the work that is also very important for the leader to do now uh, again uh, the quality and excellence in education you have to look into the the uh, uh, all 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 kind of gradings like uh, uh, dr samanta said uh, whether it is a net grading and irf uh, rankings india today rankings so leader has to think all the time that how to uh, you know work on those rankings because uh, you know sometimes though the faculty is equally responsible but as a leader you have to guide them how to handle such situations so that uh, uh, in the uh, image your perception or uh, in the uh, uh, among the students or other stakeholders your perception is high only then uh, you can be successful similarly uh uh you know uh, like in order to give the international exposure to the students that, that is also very important so encourage them to participate in various programs outside the country whether it is faculty whether it is students a uh, lot of faculty we send for conferences outside the country we have funded other institutions have funded we have also uh, you know done the incentive work in research in innovation so all these things matter i tell you these matter and this can be a very good way of dealing with that uh, in in case of internationalization we have been signing mous though delhi university has several mous but as a college also like we have signed with mci innsbruck uh, you know and they have given us a special status we can send our students for admission and uh, they will charge only 50% of the fee similarly you know i can say that uh, since 6000 teachers are listening these are very good institutions now you can train your students they can also they are free to apply over there see uh, uh, very few entrepreneurship schools in the world uh, uh, the best is the balsan in us i think second is mci so uh, one of our student has already been to balsan last year and we are planning that in next few uh, 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 years several students will be in mci because entrepreneurship innovation and incubation is buzzword in this country and these people the highly trained people are required back in in our own and similarly we have signed an mou with uh, western university australia uh, you know now in order to give better exposure to us we have a full youtube channel anybody can go in this lecture is also being recorded everyone will be heard over there then another important thing which i feel is also very important that uh, you know uh, always the leader must look for innovation in different areas and training of the students in new technologies not only students also the 
the faculty. So uh, like if, if there is a scope for data analyst, if there is a scope for machine learning, if there is a scope of artificial intelligence, if there is a scope of internet of things, if there is a scope for blockchain technology, if there is a scope of uh, you know robotics, then you, we must train accordingly because only then they will be absorbed in industry because uh, we have to link our education with the uh, employment. Otherwise, uh, low employment is the basic problem of our institutions in this country. So uh, innovation is important. Creativity is important. Uh, uh, you know, uh, again, I'm saying that the various schemes which we brought in this college, we have been the first timers. See, uh, like one scheme we brought, Deen Dayal Upadhyay Kaushal came. Now this is skill-oriented courses. Uh, a ministry came with the idea for the first time in the country. And we were the first one to initiate you know, our faculty, not I, I mean, faculty said, okay, sir, let's do this. All right, fine. I presented the idea, they gave it to us. So that's how you become a uh, first mover in any of these things. Similarly, uh, the, this training uh, program like uh, Pandit Madan Mohan Malvi National Mission for Teachers and Teaching, we were the first one to apply. Uh, initially, uh, you know, we were not knowing how to do that, but some people came forward and trained us. And that's how we presented the proposal and we got it. So once you are a first mover, and I never thought, because we were a small institution, we were a small faculty institution, I never thought who will do it? Because sometimes leader feel, why should I do? Who will do this thing? Well, no, we got the things first and then we thought how to do it. And we have been very successful in doing this. Similarly, learning to connect with the people, see whether it is a domestic people, whether it is uh, international people, whether it is our, your students, whether it is your uh, staff, you need to learn how to connect with them. See, again, very simple theory that keep on talking to the people, whether on phone, whether on uh, in the corridor or whether in, the, uh, in your office, always uh, keep on thinking, talking, and you will see a lot of new ideas come so that you can further innovate and uh, solve the problems. So, uh, you know, not taking too much of the time, one more, one, two more things I would uh, like to, uh, you know, add here. Uh, see, basically, uh, you know, the, our uh, main uh, father of the nation, Gandhiji's vision, you know, about the uh, value of enlightenment, value of enlightenment. He said about three things, care, compassion, and concern. I believe these should be also the qualities of an academic leader, the care, compassion, and the concern. And see, this world is just like a nest. A, uh, you know, uh, where, where uh, you can say they, we, we call it, uh, you know, for, for birds, they make a nest. And this world is also a nest and we are part of it. And you see when, when birds uh, prepare their own nest and they, uh, they feed their, uh, you know, newborns themselves. Similarly, we need to learn to do our work with our hands. Very, very important because help yourself. Don't depend upon others to do. Like I, being a leader, I have observed in my, uh, you know, staff room, teachers as soon as they come from the call, uh, from the home, uh, you know, they will order some PN, okay, bring water for me, bring tea for me. Well, not done. You keep a uh, water bottle with you. Uh, there are several things which I do in my office. Uh, though, of course, we, we take help, but doesn't mean that it is, it is our right. So we have to be very careful in, 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 in doing this. So with this, you know, uh, let us, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'll, I'll stop my uh, conversation here. Uh, when the questions will come, I will speak further. Over to Dr. Samantha. Thank you, Professor Agarwal. As, uh, sir, as all of you have been speaking, uh, our participants who have been uh, watching this on YouTube have been sending us uh, all kinds of uh, questions and, and comments. And uh, uh, many, many participants have appreciated the idea of the leader being humble, uh, uh, which uh, Professor Altman had uh, said that it was important that the leader be humble, which brings me to the point that is it that we think of leadership as something which is not necessarily humble. Uh, uh, somebody who is uh, 
you know, in that sense, is there a gap between uh, the leader, the academic leader, and the academic teacher? Uh, very often, I, I, as a teacher, I feel that there is a gap between uh, the teacher who thinks that the job of the administrator is to run the you know, the college or the uh, or the institution, and my job is to teach. So uh, I have uh, there is there is uh, there is a gap there. So uh, this uh, has to be addressed. How does how does the leader of an academic institution uh, spot leadership qualities in a teacher who is not necessarily involved in in administration? So how is this? Uh, gap to be bridged. I will sir, quickly read through some of these uh, questions and uh, then we can uh, take them. For example, uh, with changing circumstances, how easy it is for the leader to switch to new ideas and innovation. Uh, Professor Anand, maybe you'd like to uh, look into this. Uh, there's one more for Professor Anand. How important is trust in academic leadership? Uh, which type of leadership to follow, transformational or transactional? Um, uh, there is also questions about, does the quality of leadership change from uh, a private institution to a government-run institution? Uh, do these uh, institutions uh, need different kind uh, of, of, of uh, what is the relationship between uh, inspiration and innovation uh, thinking? So, uh, sir, let us uh, begin with uh, uh, some responses from uh, Professor Anand about uh, these ideas that we get about uh, trust, humility, uh, cooperativeness, a spirit of uh, belongingness, which the leader should have, and the kind of expectations that the teach uh, that the that that we have from the leader about running uh, about uh, a day to day running and of evolving an institution, uh, Professor Anand, your views. Thank you, Dr. Samantha, for uh, giving me another opportunity to speak, and I have been uh, listening to these two uh, co-panelists and a uh, number of issues raised and uh, being an academic and research and having traveled to uh, almost fourth institution where I'm doing my current job, uh, right from uh, University of Allahabad to Banaras Hindu University to uh, you know, starting career in a college and coming across and doing various other kinds of things. I could see that the conversation taking place and the questions posed by you uh, can be uh, classified uh, into two uh, factors which are important in a leader and factors which are important in the institutional context of leadership. So I'll put it into two ways and then I'll come back to the question. Here I'm reminded of a quote from the Harvard president in 2013 when he was traveling to, to Asian University and he said that, look here, knowledge is going to be the currency of the 21st century. It's a very famous statement and where all faculty have to engage in high quality research, ensure student engagement and as much of blending of digitization plus the place teaching. These are the three very important things that he talked about. And uh, my uh, role as a Dean International Relations of Delhi University has taken me to a variety of uh, uh, you know, situations where I've interacted with others and institutions. I have got a chance to look at these institutions and others. So I'm just setting the context before I respond to your questions. And some of the qualities which uh, Dr. Agrawal has raised, as you visualize, are necessary qualities in a leader in academic kind of a setting. But let me set the context. I see that in order to gain the relevance, two kinds of uh, models are working in higher education in academic leadership. One model which I call or has been labeled as the new liberal model of higher education and second was the socio-democratic model of the higher education. Now it is the call which each one of us who is working in a particular educational setup to take 
which of the models is in complete synchronization with the local and the national realities in which we are operating and doing our job. And these two models, uh, the neoliberal model is like, you know, creating a reputational differentiation using ranking as on the basis of free market mechanism. So you say that uh, let's the excellence in a small number of research initiative, create those capabilities uh, and then compete globally. And there are examples in China and Japan and Korea. That's what uh, they're doing it. Uh, the another one is a social democratic model, which aims to build the system of horizontally differentiating, right? High performing globally focused institutions and student experiences engaged within that. Now, most of the higher education model and the current leadership can be divided into this. And it is within this context, I don't know which one of the ideals can be achieved if the qualities of uh, humility or the humble leadership or the servant leadership is being practiced. Uh, the second one, the compliance with the strategy and building a culture of innovations and creativity. The four points which I think uh, Dr. Andrea has talked about and some of the points which uh, Dr. Agarwal raised, raising to the, uh, now the, uh, what is the model of governance we bring? And I put it everything in the model of governance to uh, in an academic leadership. Should it be based on humanitarian consideration of trust uh, and how much of a trust is to practice and how critical it is to build trust uh, or how much of democratization you are going to permit? Because democratization has also been seen as, you know, having its own set of difficulties and challenges if you practices too much, uh, the secular and the evidence-based knowledge that everybody's aiming to, to create, then what happens to the idea of imaginations and creativity for which the evidences have, uh, are yet to be mustered? Trust, empowerment, training of staff, conflict management, communication leadership, team building and creativity, all these qualities are going to help you achieve what? Going to give you access to the uh, responding to the challenges of the market, or going to create an institutional mechanism which will be long lasting, which will have a system to sustain the ups and downs of the, and because both models have their own uh, you know, track of uh, own record of the success. Now within this context, I come to the question that how in the changing circumstances, right? The way it is things are happening, which one of the leadership and how far trust is important and whether the leadership has to be transformative and transactional. Look here making recommendation for the success of any kind of leadership is, is difficult and should be avoided. That's what I feel, it's, it's like the totality of the context, right? That's very important, but all leadership, right? Begins with the transactional perspective. We start transacting because we have to achieve certain kind of practical goals, but the manner in which the processes are infused into this entire transactions, it could have a transformative experience even within that. So I would say that the transformative and the transactional, like there are certain things which need to be conducted as a business. Let me put it in a simpler way, conducted as a purpose of the business, but there are many things that cannot be conducted as a business. It has to be conducted as an academic processes, like when, when you are designing, but there are certain administrative and governance issue that must be complied. Like if you have to comply with certain regulatory strategies, as uh, Dr. Andreas was also talking about, that there has to be conformity with certain kind of regulatory guidelines. And you cannot challenge that uh, you know, particular at that point of a time because you have to comply and compliance means you have to uh, meet the guidelines. You have to, to follow the, the rules and regulations. Yes, but within that, the space available to us for a free play for you know, practicing our uh, academic autonomy, for bringing in the element of creativity and other kinds of things. That is where I think the role of, so whatever little space is available for our free play, the autonomy, the, the point of the autonomy, the free play which is available to it because uh, we are still, I see the institutions are also caught up, right? In the notion of the autonomy at one sixes, right? And at the same time, security at the another security, which is coming from being under the regulation and the funding of the government, 
right? Or even those who are becoming private, they are also aiming to get certain kind of funding from that. The security is the one axis on which most of the institutions are fighting. The security they take to achieve into creating innovations, into the uh, building products, the student engagement, right? Or going for making the train the online kind of an education. And the another one with our autonomy of that. Now, the good academic leadership will always negotiate in a very healthy, in a very efficient way of striking out a balance between the security and the autonomy. If we are making compromise and any one of the autonomies compromise, then I think we are going to be trouble in terms of practicing innovations because many of the innovations, many of the outcomes of certain kind of research can also be disruptive to the ongoing status quo practices. And it can also be seen as, as you know, kind of kind of a threat to do that. So who do allow right, kick off the track kind of innovation to do that this is the one. And second, how do we ensure the continuity of your own existence in terms of ensuring security? So I see that all those qualities, all those process of communication, team building, every kind of a thing is very necessary uh, for achieving all this for reaching where, for what kind of a destination and the eyes on the destination. So are we going to create that we have to remain subservient to the market? I mean, that's the one part leadership quality that we are aiming to do that. So let market throw us the challenges that you need this kind of employees, you need this kind of a skill set, you need that kind of a thing. This is the job of the academic institutions. This is the one kind of a thinking and large part of the discourses are centering around that. And the second point is that no, we have to comply with certain kind of market challenges and others, but at the same time, we also have to give new goals to the market that look here, these are the kinds of the things we are producing and why can't you change in your own self in order to accommodate the products which are getting manufactured. So a symbiotic relationship between the society and the academic institutions and that symbiotic relationship has to visualize in leader. And if the leader has that kind of vision, then I think it will gradually percolate down and the little small strategies of communication, building trust, taking it a team building kind of exercise, creating communication, right? Autonomy and other kind of things can be practiced. So for me, it's very important that we decide where do we want to go at. Where, and is this a destination good and attractive enough? Do we want to compete globally? That's very, very important. Or should we remain relevant first at the national and the local cultural level? And then only we will have possibility of mustering enough energy and leverage to compete globally. So that destination, once it is cleared, then I think in between the process can be worked out rather than making attainment of this process as the outcome as the result. I think that that kind of a balance between the autonomy and the security for an institutional leadership is very important for the institutions to continue. Dr. Samantha. Thank you, Professor Anand. Uh, I, uh, there are some questions uh, for Professor Andres. Uh, this is, uh, one is which type of uh, leadership quality is essential for a young faculty? That's one question. I, I think uh, uh, it emerges from uh, the point that I was making that many uh, teachers feel that, you know, if you are an academic, then you cannot be an uh, uh, administrator. Is there an anathema between uh, a good academic? Uh, uh, all of all the speakers today are all good academics who have all become good administrators. But uh, there is a popular perception that uh, if you are a good academic, then you cannot be a good uh, administrator. So, what is what are the what are the qualities that you look for in young faculty uh, uh, in terms of leadership? The other question uh, that 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 is there is uh, how is academic leadership different from administrative leadership? Are they two different things? Uh, uh, and, and, and what is the, uh, the and the, fine, the third question is, uh, how do you encourage others? How do you encourage uh, your faculty? So, uh, Professor Andres, if you'd like to take these uh, issues and make your comments. 
All right. Thanks for these many questions and quite comprehensive questions. I try to do my best to answer them at, as briefly and, uh, and precisely as, as I can. Now, what is the credentials? What is it? What is demanded and important from an academic leader? I, th I think it is that uh, the first the first prerequisite is that you must like what you are doing. If you're not, if you do not like what you are doing, it would be written at your forehead. Would be standing. You would have the stigma that you are not, you are not authentic. You need to like what you are doing. You need to even be convinced what you are doing. Then it makes it much easier to create pictures, to create visions, and to embed your students and the young generation into your visions, into these pictures, into the philosophy, whatever. That's one thing. And the other thing is that if you really like what you are doing, you will never work. You only pursue your hobby. But you will never work because you do what you like doing the most. So I think this is something else which makes it easier looking forward to going to your lecture room, to whatever, to, to teach online. You need to like what you are doing. I need to be convinced. Then another thing is that you need to encourage uh, the, the, the young generation. And very, very often, even if I see myself yeah, standing in front of the young generation of young students, very often by creating these pictures, what we have been doing, one needs to be careful that you not create or leave the impression, okay, this person is a genius. He is so great. And I could, can never as a student, as a youngster, I can never be there because this is so upfront, so, so, so much, uh, so, so high above myself. I could never do that. No, be humble and gi give them one example. And it comes from a, from a joke. And there is, there is two, two people, two managers, hiking, wandering in the desert. One is from India, and the other one is, let's say, any other country. It may take Russia, it may take Japan, United States, China, name it. So there's two managers wandering in the desert, and then suddenly they see a lion approaching on the horizon. And the horizon uh, and the lion is coming closer quite rapidly. And it turns out that the lion is huge. So the two turn around, see nothing to, no, no place to hide, to get shelter, no tree to climb on, uh, no whatever, whatever cave to hide, nothing. So they, they turn pale and they say, now we are lost. Now the Indian manager takes down his backpack, takes out his sports and running shoes and puts them on. Now the other one says, come on, what are you doing? Do you really think it will be faster than the lion? And the answer is not faster than the lion faster than you and i think many many people perceive this joke as very very serious and cruel and i think actually it's a great relief why because so many of the young generation of the students they think very often of them think they need to be faster than the lion they need to be so genius they need to be so whatever creative they need to be no you only need to be a bit faster, quicker, more courageous, innovative, name it. Just a bit better than the others. And you do not have to be faster than a lion. Just be always work a little harder. 
be a bit more whatever, uh, show a bit more courage and so on, then you will always succeed. Do what you like. That's the first thing. And don't worry about needing to be faster than the light. Choose work harder, be more whatever, courageous and so on, more innovative than the average and than most of the others. You very often do not even have to be at the very up front. Okay, and that that creates and 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 frees uh, energies and motivation because very often they say, okay, we cannot really reach, we cannot get there anyhow. Why, why, uh, why invest? Why, why you know? Why work hard and so? No, it's quite easy. Um, See, when, when I started at the, at the age of 31 to build up an academic institution, it was not easy for me either. You have a large alma mater next to you and you first alone and then with a team of five and then with a team of 50 and then perhaps with a team of 500. You very often, I, I was somehow frightened or, or, or at least concerned. Can I really make a difference? Can I be faster than the lions? I mean, there's the lion, this huge institution of, of a university. How could you dare to even exist to do something better or you know, whatever? No, it's actually quite easy. You do not have to be faster than the lion. And for instance, we've been starting to introduce a distinguished guest lecture series, including, for instance, we had uh, the, the European, uh, the president of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker on campus and his predecessor, uh, Romano Prodi, and ministers and commissioners and chief executives and even Edward Snowden and, and name it. And very often I'm asked by these even global institutions, and especially by, by the young, by my students, when I stand in front of a lecture. Now, Andreas, how in the world were you able to convince this person to, be, to, to, to give a distinguished guest lecture? And by the way, we do not pay a single cent or rupee on a rare. It's just give them the opportunity. How in the world can you achieve that? You know what my, 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 my answer is? Quite simple, by inviting them. Because 99% of, of the people think, why should I try? They, there would not be any chance anyhow. And as 99% do not even dare or try, you, your chance, your likelihood is quite big. And we have been very successful. It is just be a bit more, you know, try a bit more than the others. And then you will have the opportunity. That doesn't mean that uh, we, re we receive automatic, uh, automatically a yes. But very often, for instance, to give you the example of Romano Prodi, he was saying, yes, actually, I feel so privileged and honored that you've been inviting me, but please understand uh, my calendar is so full for this year uh, and perhaps also for the next year. So actually, they're too polite to say no. Okay, no problem, Mr. Prodi. We would be so glad if you came to us to visit us the year afterwards. And I mark it down in my calendar and it, it has kept me five years in a row until I got the fish at my, when, when, when you see the, 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 the metaphor of a fisherman. Anyhow, do what you like. Don't, don't think it is impossible. You only need and so on. And then I think be, be persistent in your mission. And be persistent means, for instance, by this little example of Romano Prodi or so, do not let discourage yourself by whatever failures. I've been making so many failures every day. But be persistent in what you believe in. 
do pre be persistent, persistent in your goals and your mission. And actually, this is more or less what I think is the most important issues. Now there is a question, uh, the, the difference between academ being an academic and administrator in, in, uh, with respect to leadership principles. I think there is not much of a difference in the leadership principles. It is, there may be a difference in the target group, in the, in the, in the, in the job, in the mission, but the principles like what you're doing, try to do it as good as possible and even better than the others. Don't be afraid of the, of the, of the huge challenge, of, of the large challenge. No, be persistent. And actually this is, I, I, don't, I don't think this is much of a difference uh, from, uh, from an academic leader as a principle. The way to live, it, the way to express it, the way the target group, okay. And the job may be different, but the principles are, from my point, the same. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, very, uh, very well answered your, your things. And uh, the main point being that, you know, uh, uh, that we, when we do something that we like doing, it's not really work because we want to do that. And that probably brings out the best in us, both as a academic as well as a leader. Uh, Professor Agarwal, we have some questions for you. Uh, our participants, of course, think you to be the representative principal administrator here. So they have certain questions uh, which are directly addressed to you as a principal of an institution. Uh, one of the questions is how do you as an academic leader or how does an academic leader handle social differences? That's one thing. How do you in the same position handle or look at diverse diversity within an institution uh, of different people? Connected with that would be uh, is it difficult for women? Are there, are there different and more challenges for a woman uh, academic to be a leader within the academics? And finally, uh, I think uh, the question is that how does an academic leader handle uh, political interference? Uh, and, and I think a bit of it that was mentioned by uh, uh, Professor Anand also. Uh, and along with that political interference, there is also uh, a question about how do you handle uh, politics within your institution, uh, which, which is. So, so these are, I think, some of the, they're very specifically our participants that said uh, SP, sir. So I'm asking the questions to SP, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Samantha. Very valid questions asked by the participants. First of all, let me make a general observation. Um, um, Professor Ananda Prakash and Professor Andreas has put up several things uh, during question hour. Uh, you know, see, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 Professor Andreas is very valid. I mean, he, he has said very, very validly that basically if you like your work, if, uh, you know, uh, if you can encourage the people, if you can, uh, you know, uh, really motivate the people, things are much easier. Uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, one has to be in, in any institution, one has to be a, uh, you know, like, like uh, Professor Anand Prakash said, either you follow what others are doing or you want to be a leader uh, among the things. We have always tried in this institution, we should, uh, you know, go faster than any other one. So uh, that, that also, uh, you know, reflected by Professor Andreas that uh, the story of lion and uh, one thing I would like to comment before I coming to that question that, uh, you know, good academician, good researcher can be a good ac administrator. Well, uh, uh, friend, let me tell you, I have a experience otherwise, uh, you know, it is very, very rare, very, very rare that a researcher, good teacher becomes good administrator, very rare. I mean, you can find very few. 
especially in our country and also in other i have seen the uh, institutions all over the uh, world i have seen in us deans changing every 6 months and i have seen the dean is working for last 20 years uh, in in his, in the same so it, it all depends and when when andrea says that it is uh, no different well faculty uh, you know in, in academic institution yes uh, there is some difference than 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 the general admission because there is a different kind of hierarchy here faculty matters a lot faculty has a lot of say in in any academic institution so what i am trying to say here is that if you want to manage institutions better he has to be a good administrator he may not be a very good researcher he may not be a very good teacher but if you want to progress he need to be a good administrator because research and teaching will be done by the faculty definitely in a academic institution there will be researchers there will be uh, good teachers that you can encourage innovate like we have done in this institution i, I myself is not a good researcher or a good very good teacher so but we have encouraged the people and uh, uh, the example is before you that 40% of our teachers are so good that they can lecture anywhere in the world so this is what uh, you know encouragement does it uh, or or uh, you know give them the opportunity to work does it so this is uh, first comment now how do i manage the social differences well friend not difficult in the sense that you have to get into that let us say i said my background is such i am from a very small village and then moved to different areas i have seen everything i have seen the caste differences social differences everything i have seen and if you are down to the earth definitely you bound to understand the problems of each and every individual it does not matter you need to understand we have a faculty here from a very uh, different background than uh, uh, you know the the uh, urban background yes you have to deal with them differently you need to understand each and every one very clearly so it is not difficult if you try to understand but if you don't want to understand and you want to uh, you know uh, uh, you want to impose yourself it is not going to work that is not going so and also very very important here point is that some of your faculty will try to influence which is uh, you know again as a leader you need to avoid you need to work independently in these directions diversity very important said you know uh, th there are always groups in this professor an prakash can highlight better but uh, you know uh, at least i know what whatever experience i have in last 12 years that at least we have managed the diversity very well in this institution whether it is students whether it is faculty whether it is non teaching staff problems occur there are problems sometimes you know uh, administrator feels that you have not done anything but still there are problems so but you have to think work out uh, the plans work, work out with the people talk to the people empower them with different things then things will be resolved and it takes a while to to do that it's not a easy task i understand but things can be managed uh connecting with the women and then women leadership i tell you women are the best leaders uh, i have an experience we have seen in this institution there is no problem but yes connecting with them is uh, is the job of a leader uh, you know we have done uh, uh, you know with every kind but but uh, as as uh, uh, among men women also have different uh, you know roles different uh, thinking different uh, uh, you know perspective but as a leader you need to understand everybody's uh, you know requirement everybody's Uh, you know uh, thinking like uh, i can give you an example that uh, we we have a facility of child care leave and uh, certain uh, women employee try to misuse that certain uh, you know are using it very very well so what we did we we told the faculty okay friends you make the rules for yourself i will obey those of course facility is there and we are bound to give there is no problem but it should not harm the interest of the institution so here uh, you know once you empower the faculty that okay you take the call on yourself and i will implement the same then probably nobody will come and then you can make the rules and they will follow it easily another important political interference friends it is bound to come in especially in a public funded institutions but uh, things uh, are not that bad at least in in central government or in delhi university 
uh, I have no experience regarding, uh, you know, the uh, state institutions, uh, political interference, because transfers are done by political will, which is not there in Delhi University. Uh, you know, we also get phone calls from political political people. We get uh, phone calls from local leaders, but you have to handle them politely. But does not mean you have to, uh, you know, surrender or obey or or anything. It can be done very easily. I can give you an example. Once what happened, I got a phone call from a president house. He said, "Sir, I'm I'm working here, and uh, one of our uh, ward has been admitted in your college. Uh, you have to admit the another one also." Uh, in the first call, I said, okay, fine, let me see what can I do. Very simple. Then, uh, you know, because I knew that he cannot be admitted. Uh, the second call came, I said, uh, friend, uh, what is your name? Where are you working? Uh, let me speak to my friend in uh, President House. You will be in trouble now because your job will be at stake. So, you know, you need to handle the things. Similarly, political leadership also, where, where you can't do much, but, uh, you know, listen uh, uh, you know and then uh, you may not act but you need to uh, work out with them in a, in a polite manner similarly politics within the institution friends uh, the main thing here is you should not involve yourself in that politics whether it is left right or center you should work on a academic goal academic institutional goal vision uh, uh, you have nothing to do with that 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 situation of course the sometimes problem come to you then try to resolve try to resolve we have done here very well in the sense that rather than uh, you know uh, uh, rather than uh, pushing each one against each other we have never done that we try to calm down both the groups and that's that has happened. and you need to not differentiate anything you do as per the rules and you for you everybody is a equal person everybody has the same capability and i think if you can take work from each and every group you can uh, take work from each and every employee each and every faculty things can be easily worked out thank you samantha uh, this is my uh, point and if you have anything else i am ready to uh, uh, sir, now we uh, we enter the last phase of our concluding phase of our uh, discussion today. Uh, Professor Anand, would you have any concluding comments to make? Would you agree with uh, Dr. Agarwal when he says that researchers and uh, academic uh, leadership are kind of two different uh, paths? Sir, your mic. Sir, your mic. Your your speaker. It's yeah, that's right, sir. Dr. Samantha, thank you very much. Uh, I've been quite fascinated uh, when I listen this that uh, you do a job which you like. And as a psychologist, I often you know, ask myself, do I always get to do things which I like? <laughs> Can liking also be developed after having experienced something which I didn't like in the initial? So are we talking about uh, the like as possibility of a choice? Because when there is no possibility of a choice, it often happens. And I've seen and seen with many of uh, you know students and uh, both that many times they begin as a very reluctant person. So likes is something that at times is also discovered in the process of engaging with the work. Like I gave uh, one book, uh, my experiment, the truth of my Pagadi to my student as an essential assignment. No one liked me, no one liked the book. They said that this is a treacherous and you are killing us by making us read such a thick book. I said, no, please do it. And then believing many of them coming back and saying, sir, thank you very much. It has actually changed me and I've started liking reading these kinds of books. So this, this possibility that I may do something which I may not like in the beginning. And mo most of us can recount and recall and reflect about our own experiences. The times the journey begins as a reluctant traveler. But as you start moving from one milestone to another, maybe out of sheer compulsion of the situations as a no choice situation, then mind also has a tremendous capacities of adapting. There is a habituation of neurons 
in your mind and you will start developing a kind of a liking for that so that possibility should be kept alive and as psychologist only was curious and trying to respond to it the second question is that uh, administration and uh, academics both going hand in hand i don't think uh, there are a huge number of examples into the uh, you know many universities where they have created two different lines of functioning so if you have gone into the administration you are you know freed from the all kinds of academics but in the indian universities in the our counterpart this go hand in hand so you are an academic and you are given an academic administrative responsibility you are supposed to acquire these kinds of administrative skills run it efficiently and do it because they are based on certain kind of untested uh, assumptions and the ideas so there has been very mixed kind of you know the reports uh, the administration requires a different kind of skill set and i will give one personal example uh, when i joined uh, delhi university as a uh, young faculty uh, and i was supposed to teach uh, an applied discipline applied psychology and uh, i wanted some allocation of fund to get myself trained into certain uh, pedagogy and certain kind of skills so i went to meet the director at that time i will not name that person and he said look here there is no provision in the rule book to do the funding for associate professor that time it was called readers you know training i said sir i don't feel equipped to teach this kind of course and i need training myself he said there is no provision for funding and there is no budget humne ka i have come to an academic leader this rule has already been told to me by the people down your line which are the clerks they they run the administrators i have come to an academic leadership a person who is an academic leader has to create provisions yes for creating that budget allocation and the grant the rule has already been told to me by the clerks now if i would have been satisfied by getting the rules i would not have come to you so that is the kind of it and it was visualized that the academicians if they find that certain rules and regulations they will always interpret it into the larger interest and that is where i would like to differentiate it between the principles and the rules principles remain the same uncompromising the good for all the wellness of all pursuing the larger institutional principles but if the rules which are situational are interfering in the attainment of the larger principles that no rule need to be interpreted and i feel if there is an academician administrator an administrator who has a certain academic practices will always interpret the rules right and look look at our own records that many of the administrators have interpreted rules to suit the requirement of the academics rather than putting it into the iron cast cases and say that this rule can't be changed so that's where to be difference between the finance uh, and the audit guy and the academy guy so that's the one and third thing the politics thing which uh, finally i'll summarize that the politics is basically the process of uh, ensuring distribution of resources and the power the decision making and a good administrator and a good leader keep balancing it out so that it doesn't get uh, you know uh, cornered by a few members of the institutions that they only have the access to these resources and to the power of the decision making as long as a good administrator have a helicopter view and saying it that no it can be shifted it can be given to others and if i am giving it to the one set of a people to have that resource and have that kind of power to influence then these are my well known reasons for doing that i think I, i would like to do that and then only you can say that well if you are able to demonstrate the same set of competencies capabilities right abilities and deliveries then you can also be entitled to have the same kind of resources and ensuring that is the politics that is what i would call a politics politics is a, not to me is always a dirty word but I always always say that it is the process by which the decision making and the power distribution is carried it out so leadership is expected to do it as a value driven politics 
and po without politics, nothing can move into the institution, but this politics has to be value driven. And as far as known to the others that why he is doing like this. And I have reason to know that why he's doing like this. So these are the three points I wish to make by way of my summing it up. Like, for example, liking may not always be the first thing to come. Liking can always happen later. And that possibility has to kept alive. And otherwise, how we are going to experiment with the new ideas and new thoughts? Are we always going to travel to unknown? Or how we are going to travel to unknown territories, unknown destination? So uh, I, as psychologists, would like to keep uh, you know uh, both. It can be few things of your liking, but few things which not of your liking, but liking may develop later. Right. Thank you. That's the Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. This is uh, it's it's been it's been so nice listening to you and very nice seeing you after very long, sir. Because <laughs> in India we have this lockdown and we can't see each other. But yeah. then you have this way of uh, seeing you. Thank you so much, sir. Professor Andreas, you have some concluding comments to make uh, regarding the proceedings today. Actually, I think this is very, uh, I can keep it short. Live your dream. Live your dream. That's, I think, what you should have, what you always uh, should keep in mind, and communicate your dream. Perhaps I, I may conclude with one final remark, because leadership means also make, make decisions and communicate. And perhaps I haven't been mentioning this enough. See, whenever uh, we, we have whatever a, an application, give an example, Someone uh, applies for a study place at the MCI. And this, uh, by whatever, uh, for whatever reason, is a very, very important person. Hmm? And they are being accepted or not, depending on their performance in their admission. Okay. And uh, very often, because that was also, is there public influence or political influence? Yes, there has been uh, attempts to influence enrollment and admission decisions. And you know what I'm doing? All those positive, those who make it through the admission process, just receive the normal letter delivered by the postman or now via whatever, that can be done by the secretary, by whoever. I'm, I never communicate a positive decision in this respect. That can go the regular way. But when a very important applicant or out of a very important family applies and is not accepted, it's me, all this person, myself. I call them up, typically late in the evening, after work, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, not five, 5 p.m., not, not nine to five. And you know, the, and I explain them, you were not good enough in the admission or others were better, and explain them the reasons. And they're so impressed that I, I take the time and call them. And what I mean is, stand up, do communicate the, 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 the more negative a, a, a decision or a, uh, whatever a, a message is, the more you need to do it yourself. The positive ones, many think leadership meanings being the good cop, you know, being the good cop, I've been doing a favor to you. Uh, I'm, I'm the one being, bringing you the nice message. That doesn't need you. But communicate, stand. This is the decision and it has been coming out and it complies with our principles. This is why I call you to tell you this. And you're important enough to me to say you that. And I think this is perhaps something you, you sh which may help you through, through uh, your career. Why? Because I never afterwards or after when doing that, I never, never, ever 
receive something, uh, any complaint, any pressure by whoever. I mean, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, uh, I, I wouldn't uh, make compromises anyhow. But why? I mean, by doing that, it, I receive acceptance. And this is the important thing. Thank you so much for letting me be in part of this wonderful panel. And uh, my desire and wish is that all the, the teachers now are uh, doing their job, doing their best, hope, hopefully liking what they are doing, hopefully inspiring the young generations, are taking the one or other example or principle with them, which may guide them through their job and their career. Thank you, Professor Andres. Thank you very much. Uh, before I uh, go on to uh, Professor Agarwal for his final comments, uh, I would like to tell my participants that Ramanujan College is already engaged in doing a collaborative work with uh, MCI in So uh, if any one of you, your students, your institution would also uh, be, want to become a part of this adventure, you're most welcome to get in touch with us and uh, we will uh, carry forward this, this uh, work uh, together to all my participants all over the country who are listening. And I also want to say that those of us who have not been able to see this um, uh, thing live on uh, YouTube it will be uh, put all back on YouTube for uh, viewing at later, later points. Uh, Dr. Agarwal, um, uh, final comments from you. You are the principal of a college and the college has done exceedingly well in the last uh, uh, one decade and it's become one of the, one of the most well-known colleges of Delhi University and also of, of India. Uh, what would be your final comments about today's uh, discussion? Okay, first of all, uh, really thankful to my co-panelists. Very good observation, uh, both by Professor Anand Prakash and Professor Indriyas. Actually, I have also learned several things today. Well, the final comment I can say that, you know, basically, it all depends upon situation to situation. There is no definite rules. There are no definite uh, styles. There are no definite, uh, you know, papers in which it is written that uh, you act like uh, Professor An Prakash said that uh, rules has to be interpreted in the interest of the institution. And you all know that we have done in this institution whatever is best in the interest of the institution and interest of our stakeholders. So I think the basic philosophy is very simple. Uh, you know, it all depends uh, on situation to situation in any of the academic institution. Uh, you know, I, we can speak of our own. Some people raised a query that is it different in a private and public funded? Yes, my dear, there are differences. But, uh, you know, basically, uh, I can relate one example here. When we go to inspect a private institution, things are, uh, you know, very, very, uh, things are in place. But in a government institution, there is no cohesiveness. Things are not in place. Now, that is one observation, but that does not mean, that does not mean that institution is best and that is worst. No, no, I'm not saying that. Uh, see, it is all, uh, you know, the work, how you take. The public funded institutions are facing serious crisis because we are not working in a team. We are not working in a cohesiveness. What we feel is that we are there and nobody can stop us. Uh, nobody can uh, do anything. So let us do whatever we can or whatever we want to. So, uh, you know, this is just besides the point that, of course, the good public funded institution is having a good leader. Who, who listens to everyone, who, who interacts with everyone, who work as per the situation, things will be much, much better. And most of our public institutions are suffering because we do not have good leaders. That is the reason I, I made a comment that sometimes we appoint very good researchers, very good teachers as, uh, as administrators, but institutions suffer. 
so we we want that institution should not suffer. so let us uh, you know I'm, i'm concluding with this thing that there is no definite rule definite uh, formula where we can say this is the this is how it works but i have an advice for young uh, faculty that they must learn every day they must be part of the administration for any work which they feel or they like as professor andrea said that okay i want to do this even if the leader is not inviting you to do you just go and tell him that this is my interest if it is possible please give me he may not but ultimately when he will understand that you are the best in the institution for this work he will assign it to you so with this once again thank you very much everyone from my side my panelist and uh, my my colleague who are conducting uh, dr samanta dr lata and every other colleague who have joined and all the participants thank you very much thank you uh, dr agarwal uh, i think we now conclude today's uh, panel discussion uh, i have this privilege honor of thanking uh, professor anand prakash for being with us sir you've always been very kind and your blessings for us and our institution has taken this institution where it has uh, in 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 uh, we we have a you know we have really have no words to thank you for being with us here today uh professor andreas altman thank you very much uh for being with us thank you for your comments we will have to go back and see this uh entire recording again to look into some of the very uh, interesting profound and often provocative uh comments and points which have been made about uh leadership in an academic institution uh the requirements the 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 the, the problems the challenges which are there thank you very much uh professor andreas altman and sir thank you very much um uh, uh, for being with us i'd also like to thank uh, the director of the uh, program uh, the induction program dr k lata she has been here with me you haven't seen her but she has been looking into the youtube and taking down all the questions which have been coming from the uh, participants and she has been giving me these sheets of papers uh from which i've been reading out and 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 putting the questions thank you uh, very much dr lata thank you dr vipin who has been the in charge of all the uh technical technical things uh here the entire team uh which has been organizing this one month almost now it's uh, towards its last leg this one month long induction orientation program i'd like to thank all my colleagues for their support and help and finally of course uh, thank you once again dr agarwal for this opportunity and for this program uh hope, hope to see all of you soon hope to see you after this covid thing is over and uh, we can meet uh, thank you very much thank you dr samanta thank